troubleshooting procedures for the 10 to 50 milliamp force balance transmitters are very similar to those for the motion balance type. Connect the DC power to the transmitter. For this Foxborough model, the power should be 60 to 90 volts. The red wire is positive and the gray is negative. Next, connect a milliameter into the output circuit. Disconnect the upper right link, isolating the number 2 terminal. Connect the positive of the milliameter to the number 2 terminal and the negative to the terminal from which the link was removed. Depending on whether the span is low, medium, or high, the negative lead of the milliameter will be connected to either the number one or number four terminal. Gently depress the detector armature disc. The output current should go to 50 milliamps or more. Release the disc the output should drop back to 10 milliamps. The preceding check could also be made with the current calibrator hooked up for transmitter calibrating. Or with the gray box connected for calibrating. If the transmitter response is normal for the detector test, the trouble is most likely in the measuring section. Replace the diaphragm and check for calibration. If the transmitter output is abnormal for the detector test, then the trouble is somewhere in the electronics section. There are three major components in the electrical section of most force balance transmitters. The detector, the amplifier oscillator, and the feedback or force motor. This is a detector. This is an amplifier. And here we have a force motor. Amplifier oscillators are relatively easy to test and or replace. For this one, remove the terminal cover Remove the seven amplifier leads. Take out these two screws. And lift the amplifier up and away from the casting. To replace the amplifier, reverse the procedure. To test the amplifier, connect a headphone set across terminals A and B with a 0.1 to 0.25 microfarad capacitor in series with one phone lead. Slowly move the detector by forcing the counterweight back and forth. If the amplifier is okay, a 4,000 kc hum will be heard at some point. Resistance and ground tests are used for testing the detectors and feedback motors.
We can see here that a check from A to B in the detector section should give a certain resistance. Note the green and blue color code. Here the ohmmeter is connected to the A and B terminals. Also, the resistance can be tested between C and D. The detector is really a transformer. The resistance should be infinite between D and B terminals. Here we are checking the resistance between the two windings of the transformer. It is infinite and correct. The same technique is applied to checking the feedback motor. We can see here that with the links disconnected, the resistance between 1 and 3 should be 131 ohms. This one checks out OK. The resistance between 4 and 5 should be 42 ohms. This one measures approximately 42 ohms. Feedback motor and detector replacements are done rather infrequently. Each manufacturer has specific detailed instructions for their particular design. Once determining a replacement is needed, follow the manufacturer's step-by-step -step procedure for replacing the item. Don't forget that once we complete the repair and calibration of the force balance electronic transmitter, we return it to service. To repeat, some of the tasks we have done in the shop could be done in the field. For example, moving the detector to see if we get an output. It is a matter of judgment. In summary, to troubleshoot an electronic transmission system, first make sure that the process measurement is adequately reaching the sensing device. The impulse lines must be open and in good condition. Check that the DC supply voltage is correct at the transmitter. Isolate the trouble between the measuring section and the transmission section of the transmitter. And repair accordingly. Just one last bit of caution. An electronic transmitter may calibrate OK on an ungrounded meter stand in the shop. not work at all in the field. Should you encounter this problem, return the transmitter to the shop and make a thorough search for signal grounds. Some shops eliminate the possibility of an undetected signal ground in the transmitter by grounding the transmitter case during shop calibration. Now work exercise number three in your workbook.